Hey guys, welcome back to the Bucket Think Tank. So, I was actually not planning to do anything until my until I finished my Uncle Scrooge video, but this news came out. Jodie Whittaker and Chris Chibnall are leaving Doctor Who, and I am a mess, really, in terms of how I feel about this. Not that I'm an emotional wreck, really. Like, I'm not lying awake going, No, God! No, God, please, no! No! Nor am I doing this. Yes! I'm just kind of... Eh. Because I get it. I get it. The reveal, we found out that apparently Jody and Chris had agreed, hey, three years, we'll, we'll do a thing, three seasons, and then we'll leave. Like, you know, we'll come, we'll either usher in a new red era, or we'll burn it all down, and we'll just call it quits. You know, we'll get waffles at the end of it, and we'll all go home as heroes or villains. However you want to view it. To me, well, actually, before we get to how I feel, let's sort of consider how the fandom has felt about this. So I've been sort of, like, looking around different groups and whatnot, the greatest, this might be the first reveal I've seen and heard about, uh, about, you know, the, 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 the actor playing the Doctor was leaving, and the response is not entirely sad. Uh, when you go on Facebook, you'll see more heart reacts and laugh reacts than you'll see, or just a general like, but you'll really get the sad reacts. I remember seeing sad reacts when Matt Smith was, the, well, no, literally, I, I remember seeing sad reacts when Peter Capaldi left, when Stephen Moffat was leaving. I still remember when people say, hey, when David Tennant left, that was the end of Doctor Who. When Ross left, that was the end. Here, it's just sort of like, well, maybe she'll do better with on Big Finish. Or, you know, Jody's great, but the scripts have been great. The general consensus, Chris Chibnall's gone, which had to happen. This might be the first time where the fandom has, for the most part, acknowledged Jody, the actor isn't to blame entirely. It's all entirely on with the, with the BBC and the showrunner. All right, actors just do their jobs. All right, some actors have a bit more leeway. Some are able to sort of, um, sort of move their own personal weight around as a star, as the title, and say, hey, this is where I want to go with, and are able to do it without coming off as being terrible to work with. And we, we've seen good relationships between actors and showrunners. There was um, Tom Baker and Peter Hinchcliffe, as example, that I recently found out about. Hinchcliffe knew how to manage Tom, from what I've heard. There is David Tennant and Russell. Uh, the opposite side of that is apparently Crystal Eccleston and Russell, depending on what you hear, so grain of salt. Uh, Matt and Peter both had a great rapport with Stephen Moffat. But, of course, you look at something like Colin Baker and J&T, and you sort of get the idea that how important their relationship is. Whitaker and Chibnall seem to be great. Um, everyone sort of knows that Chibnall chose Whitaker. Um, like, that was the person who he brought with him. Like, hey, if I'm going to do this, I'd like to put up a candidate, my friend Jody. You know, I've worked with her. We have a rapport, which made sense. But it always felt like, from what you've heard and whatnot, Jody sort of deferred to Chris the direction she should go in. And maybe that was always the problem. She never really felt, or at least chose not to, sort of go in the right direction. But again, I don't know. I wasn't there. They don't talk about it. Everyone's sort of professional enough not to say, well, we had a rocky relationship, or person A told me this and this and that and this. They all know enough to not say anything until they're done. So maybe two years from now, Jody will spill the beans, or Mandip, or Tolson, or Bradley, or one of them is going to just spill the proverbial tea. That's it. But when I think about how I feel about this, I'm disappointed. Not that she's gone, but that in two seasons, and uh, two seasons, total of what? She came in 2017, about five years, we're looking at five years, uh... I've yet to feel sort of connected to this Doctor. And I've been doing this, you know, um, Doctor Who retrospective. Doing it again. Where, you know, we start with William Hartnell, we, we finished Colin Baker, and we're currently watching Sylvester McCoy's era. And I've found moments where I connect with all of these Doctors. Maybe not in their entirety. Like, you know, every episode of William Hartnell is not like, yeah, that's my boy. Same with Pertwee. Same with Davison. Colin. Mixed bag. You know? 
But I can always say this is a moment. This is the story where I'm like, this is what this doc is about. This is them at their best. And with with Jody, with thirteen, I've never found that. And it's it's sad. In part, I would say, could I be a bit biased? Maybe. But I made it an effort to come into this with no expectations other than to have a good time. And that hasn't been met. It hasn't been colossally bad, which I would prefer if it was colossally bad. Granted, Thomas Children is colossally bad, but that's a different kind of bad. When I'm saying something is epically bad, you know, a horrible, great, beautiful fire, I'm talking about something from like the Moffat era, where, you know, it's bad, we can all see it's bad, but we have fun talking about how bad it is. Or we can see that, you know, we might have had to throw this entire idea out, or maybe we can have fun reworking it. The Whitaker era always feels like it's a slow, slow crash that we could have avoided the entire time, but we chose not to. Like, there was, like someone could have said, Tina, just, just turn. You know, we could have done that. And to me, I just... I, I don't like that I haven't had the time of my life. There have been a lot of people who I know who love Doctor Who, got me into Doctor Who, have stopped watching. All right? That, that to me, says a lot. I've got some friends who I've been able to get into big finishes. Like, I love this. And a lot of them are saying, you know what? I'd like to see Jodie Whittaker on big finish. You know, maybe the writers there can really push this story where it belongs. And I think that's a discussion for another video. But I just... I've never, this is the first time for me where I'm seeing an era where, like, you know, it's time to end. And now we're into the fun era of guess who the next doctor is going to be. And now it's like, well, the next one should also be a woman, or it shouldn't be a woman, or it should never be a woman again, or it could be a person of color. I'm like, these are unnecessary attributes to add to your casting choice. Do, do what they did on Grey's Anatomy. Do a blind cast, all right? Just get a bunch of people in, and, like, you know, the casting person turns, or whoever you want turns their back and just hears the performance. Like, you know what? Let's, uh, A, B, C, and D, out of those, out of those three, out of those four, um, A and C, get out, B and D, and we'll go through that again. You know, I think that would work best. Same thing with the writing. Who, no one really cares what color, or ethnicity, or gender identity the any of these actors are half of us don't even know who they are before they get the job all right i never guess which brit is going to be you know the doctor because i don't know most of them uh, hopefully it's olivia coleman just saying just saying that's my short list all right otherwise i don't care i, I don't care unless you've got some horrible scandal my only other stipulation would be d don't have be someone who's already been the doctor once that happens doctor who needs to end I'm sorry, it just does. But anyway, getting off topic, getting off topic. I am, I'm glad Chibnall's gone. Because Chibnall was, he's never done anything I've loved for Doctor Who. Alright, people love him for Broadchurch, which couldn't be any further from Doctor Who if you tried. Despite the fact, like, half the cast was in Doctor Who. So, yes. Uh, I'm hoping... Despite what I've just said, I'm hoping that this last season, these last six episodes, the three specials, are going to knock it out of the park. That'll make us go, you know what? Push came to shove it, it went out with a bang. It retconned the Thomas Child arc. That hopefully that's what it does. So yeah, what did you guys think about this? Are you glad are you glad they're gone? Are you uh, sad to see them go? However you feel about it. It's fine, it's cool. Who are you hoping will come in next for the showrunner, for the next Doctor? What are you hoping to see in this final season and specials? Let me know in the comment section, I'll check and I'll catch you all later. This is about your Think Tank signing off. Thanks for watching, and as always, may your fandom serve you well.